Today we're covering an atomic mutated dinosaur who comes forth from the sea, is capable of unleashing a destructive atomic breath, carries a vehicle in his mouth at one point, and first appeared in a black and white production which was originally released in Japan. Humor me for a moment and try to forget that you already saw the title and thumbnail for this video, and once you have, I'm assuming you'll guess that the monster I just referred to is none other than the king of the monsters himself. But believe it or not, you are incorrect, because the creature I'm talking about is a different one that happens to possess all these same traits. And that kaiju is Agon, the Atomic Dragon, one of the most blatant ripoffs of Godzilla that you'll ever run across. Or is it? We've got a lot of amazing kaiju history to unpack today, so let's dive right into this, my 5k subscriber special, The History of Agon, the Atomic Dragon. <laughs> Before we get started with this exciting kaiju history, I just want to thank you all for your incredible support in helping me reach the 5k sub milestone so quickly, and then going above and beyond and lifting the sub total far beyond that before I could even get started producing this video. I'm going to do my very best to keep producing the most entertaining and educational classes I can for all of you. Okay, with that said, let's end the agonizing wait and jump right into our topic for this class, beginning with the behind the scenes origins of our subject. Let's start by introducing the production that Agon originates from. Phantom Monster Agon, known as Agon the Atomic Dragon in other parts of the world, was originally intended to be a 26 episode show, but was later reworked into a much shorter four part miniseries that was aired in 1968 on Fuji TV from January 2nd through January 5th. The show had actually been produced four years earlier, but for reasons we'll get into momentarily, the company that produced the series, Nippon TV, had to shelve it for nearly half a decade, and because of this the show was actually quite outdated by the time it finally did air. During the four years Phantom Monster Agon was stuck gathering dust in some film storage area, several shows and movies that revolutionized the tokusatsu genre aired, most notably the first three entries in the Ultra series, the latter two of which were in color. By the time Agon was finally permitted to show himself on Japanese TV, as one of my sources for this video mentions, his black and white show probably already looked like a product of a bygone era, because of how much the kaiju genre had changed over the past four years. So how did we get here? What horrifying crime had Agon committed that made it deserve a four year imprisonment which ruined its chances to make a splash in the toku world? I've seen two explanations for Agon's exile put forward, and it may be that they are both true. The first, more boring reason is that Nippon TV couldn't find a sponsor for the show. But the more popular explanation states that the series was shelved for daring to introduce a monster that resembled Toho's Godzilla. Yep, purportedly the folks at Toho were the ones who ruined Agon. You see, Phantom Monster Agon was created by Shinichi Sekizawa, who you may remember from some of my other videos, such as the history of Kumonga, which talked about him being one of the screenwriters for Son of Godzilla. But he'd been working for Toho long before that, writing the scripts for movies like Fearful Attack of the Flying Saucers from 1956, Mothra, King Kong vs. Godzilla, etc. And because he was a Toho employee and had signed a contract with the company, Toho was able to use one of the clauses in the contract against him to prevent him and Nippon TV from airing the kaiju show they'd made, probably fearing that Agon posed a threat to their own atomic monster. It took a while, but it seems that eventually something or someone was able to convince Toho that Agon hadn't been based on Godzilla, because in 1968 they finally permitted the Atomic Dragon to be released from imprisonment. Perhaps it was Sekizawa himself, or another Toho employee, Fuminori Ohashi, who had also worked on Agon, who persuaded them. But the damage was done. Agon couldn't really be a big hit anymore. However, it turns out that Toho isn't the total villain of this story, because much later, in the 1980s, the same company that once did Agon such a bad turn actually ended up combining the four episodes of his series together into a movie, and releasing it on VHS, which seemingly helped boost Agon's fame a bit. So, I guess all's well that ends sort of well. There's definitely still work to be done to get the word out about this great monster, so hopefully this video will help out with that. Now that you know all the history of Agon's show, let's look at the behind the scenes history of the monster itself. Agon's name is just a shortened version of Atomic Dragon, which, once you know that, really makes the title he's inherited seem a little pointless, huh? Atomic Dragon the Atomic Dragon. <laughs> it seems fair to credit Shinichi Sekizawa as the creator of the kaiju, especially since he wrote the first two episodes of the series, but Kozo Uchida, who wrote the other two episodes, also played a role in deciding what the monster would be up to. 
One source lists Seichi Torizuka as the art designer for the series, so he may have been the one to design the kaiju. Whatever the case, it seems we do know who modeled the monster's suit. It was the aforementioned Fuminori Ohashi, who was also one of the two directors of Phantom Monster Agon, and is most well known for both modeling and playing the snowman in Toho's Half Human. He didn't don the costume he'd modeled in this case, however. That honor instead went to Etsuji Azuma in his only suit acting role. After the show's four episodes were completed, the Agon suit would be modified into two other monsters for the Ambassador Magma series by P Productions, the creators of Spectre Man. And because of Phantom Monster Agon's delayed airing, Ambassador Magma became the first time Agon suit actually appeared on screen. And that's pretty much the extent of the behind-the-scenes stuff I have on this guy. But of course, if any of you students have any extra info, be sure to let us know in the comments. But of course, we certainly aren't done, because now we get to analyze Agon's in-universe history, beginning, of course, with episode one of the miniseries. One night, during a horrible typhoon, a vehicle loaded with uranium was blown off a cliff and sunk into the sea. So the next day, the National Atomic Energy Center began an investigation into the matter. But what they found instead was a gigantic radioactive monster! It was hypothesized to be a Jurassic-era dinosaur that had been lying dormant beneath the sea before being mutated by atomic energy, which certainly seems safe to assume considering the incident from a night or two ago. But the weird thing is that the scientist who put this theory forward seemed to think that experimental nuclear bombs were the cause of Agon's mutation, and that uranium was his energy source, like a food. I guess that hypothesis could be possible, and Agon just moseyed on over to that spot that night to grab a bite to eat. What occurred right after this initial appearance by Agon wasn't shown, but it wasn't long before the Atomic Energy Center started seeing unusual readings on a uranium meter, heralding Agon's return. The kaiju surfaced near a beach outside the Atomic Center, so cool, and ambled through a forest on his way to the center, downing many trees and even causing a small crevice to open up, which trapped a scientist, one of many who tried to escape the monster after it appeared on the beach. She was helped out in the next episode though, so don't worry. Agon demolished the atomic center with ease, causing a significant amount of... Uh, wait, what? Let's see that again. Wow, the building just decided to destroy itself in anticipation of Agon's swipe. C can you use the force or something? Uh, anyway, Agon caused a significant amount... Uh, hey, could you please just knock that over? I I'm no fan of power outages, but come on! Leaving it like that is far worse than knocking it down. It'll leave me uncomfortable forever! Uh, well, anyway, Agon caused a significant amount of destruction, but some suspected he would be destroyed by the explosion of the Atomic Center's nuclear reactor. Well, if he was, let's just say it didn't take him long to respawn. However, the military had been preparing for his return, so as soon as Agon showed himself again, they came at him with tanks and fighter jets. But they were no match for Agon, who used his fire breath to wipe them all out. So it was decided they'd just give Agon what he wanted, some atomic fuel in a truck, in order to temporarily pacify the monster. Having been served this delicious meal, the kaiju journeyed back out to sea. At the beginning of episode 3, Agon was shown to be sleeping peacefully underwater, but a pair of thieves would end up putting a stop to the kaiju's nap when they brought him some uranium they stole to get the monster to move so they could retrieve a suitcase full of smuggled narcotics they'd dropped in the water earlier, which had nestled itself snugly under the kaiju's foot. They didn't even need to drop the uranium in the water because Agon seems to have sensed it and emerged from the ocean. He took hold of a little boat that contained both the thieves' recovered suitcase and a boy they were holding hostage, complicating matters both for the crooks and for the military who wanted to take the kaiju down. Agon was able to come ashore undisturbed as the third episode of the series ended. In the last episode, Agon took the boat up a mountain and then remained still, I guess to admire the view. The military then went forward with a helicopter operation to rescue the boy from the boat. Agon remained remarkably still as a man rappelled down to rescue the kid, and the onlookers thought the mission was about to succeed, but Agon dashed their hopes when he became angry and smashed the helicopter with a strong swipe, and then headed down the mountain toward a city. Desperate to get the monster to change direction, the military decided to lure him away with more uranium, but the helicopter carrying the kaiju's favorite snack didn't arrive in time, and Agon proceeded to begin wrecking a steel manufacturing plant. Thankfully, the helicopter finally did arrive before Agon could destroy the furnaces at the steel plant, and in his mad dash to snag the uranium the vessel was carrying, Agon dropped the boat and the boy was saved. 
The protagonists of the show also discovered the drugs in the suitcase and decided they would feed them to Agon with the uranium to finally kill him. But after going for an unexpected ride on Agon's tail, the criminals were able to take the suitcase back and make a getaway in the helicopter. But as we already saw, Agon is super effective against helicopters, and so when the cocky crooks decided to play around with the kaiju, they got what was coming to them. Hmm, this scene reminds me of a scene in Dogura that we covered back in this video. And interestingly, Dogura is yet another production Shinichi Sekizawa was a screenwriter for. And it came out the same year they produced Phantom Monster Agon. Coincidence? Agon ate the uranium still connected to the helicopter, but may have also swallowed the narcotics. Perhaps because of this, the kaiju stumbled back toward the city and destroyed the steel plant furnaces after all, catching fire in the process. Feeling awful, the kaiju waddled back out to sea, but whether the monster died remains uncertain. This ambiguous ending may have been because there were going to be more episodes, but whatever the case, Agon was never seen again, except of course in the movie that Toho made by editing the four episodes of the series together. I wonder, since Toho did that, does that technically make Agon a Toho kaiju now? Wouldn't it be incredible if at some point in the future, Agon got to fight against the monster who ruined his career, Godzilla, in an epic battle of atomic mutated dinosaur kaiju? Who do you think would win, Agon or Godzilla? Agon must hate Godzilla for what Toho did to him, so he'd definitely go all out, and I'm sure he'd put up a good fight. Let me know who you think the victor would be in the comments. Now let's discuss figures. At first, I didn't think there was any Agon merch out there, but an internet search seemed to indicate that a few types of figures exist, but if so, they are definitely very rare. Not a single one was available for sale on eBay. If anyone knows where they can be found, be sure to leave a comment, because I'd love to add Agon to my Toku archive. And that wraps up this 5k subscriber special. I have more fun ideas for when we get to future subscriber milestones, so if you like this video, please consider... Um, hey, kids, you really need to stop popping up while I'm telling people to subscribe. This is important stuff. Oh, for sure, Professor, but this is also important. We figured out a scientific way to determine who would win, Agon or Godzilla. Yeah, we'll just pretend to be them and have a duel to the death. And after we kill each other, we both can even write essays for you about our findings. This is such a well-thought-through experiment, huh, Professor? Hey, this is genius, kids! Oh, wait, no, no, what am I thinking? No, no duels in the class- Glad we're all in agreement. I'll be the ref. Thanks, Scrape Sajin. You got it. Let the fight begin. Eee, take this, Pencil Leopard! Whee! Nice try, Kishimukun, but I can use the force. Uh, guys, the professor is coming back. You make us stop the fight. We have to stop him. Kids, this is going to f Whoa! Aha, of course. If Agon fought Godzilla, maybe they'd end up teaming up to take out a common threat. Huh, <laughs> should have thought of that. But what do you all think? Let us know in the comments. See you around.